first idea that we had uh, was to just go directly ahead and solve this inequality, n squared over n minus 1 is greater than or equal to m. Uh, so when you rearrange that into a quadratic, you get something that looks like n squared minus mn plus m is greater than or equal to 0. Um, and then applying the quadratic formula requires that you remember what your variable is that you're solving for. We're trying to solve for n. Uh, and so anything attached to an n term is going to be part of the coefficients that we plug into the quadratic. And so the coefficients we get here uh, are respectively 1, minus m, and m. So in the quadratic formula, we end up getting something that looks like this. Minus minus m, plus or minus the square root of minus m, the quantity squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is m. All that divided by 2a, which is 2 times 1. Um, simplify that quantity under the radical a little bit, and you end up with m squared minus 4m. There's really not anything we can do with that to make it nicer. And so at the end of the day, uh, this is what we get. This is the value, uh, this is the real number, if you like, uh, that makes this expression equal to 0. Uh, and then we would just have to go in and test the number line to see which pieces of the number line are actually going to make this quantity greater than or equal to zero. Uh, when we do that, we find out that it's the part here as well as the part over here, uh, if you like. Um, and so what I saw on, on those of your papers who are doing it this way uh, is you observed that it's this larger of the two, m plus the square root of m squared minus 4m, all over 2, that if you select that to be your threshold, you say something in your proof like, let's let capital N be, first of all, capital N has to be a natural number, but that natural number has to be in comparison to m plus the square root of m squared minus 4m all over 2. What comparison do we want here? How does capital N need to relate to this quantity if the rest of our proof is going to work? Yeah, we want... We want this, right? Um, in other words, you find some nasty real number such that all of the n's greater than or equal to this real number will satisfy this inequality. And so since our capital N needs to be natural, we just need to know why it is that there exists a natural number that's greater than or equal to this real. And how do we know that? Archimedes. Archimedes tells us that any real number that you provide for me including this one, uh, there will exist a natural number which is greater than or equal to that. Right? And so we choose our capital N uh, to be greater than or equal to that nasty quantity, and then for that N, we'll be able to make the rest of the argument the way that you want. That's the explicit straight ahead, just you know, drive, your, drive your truck directly straight forward down the street way of doing this. Um, hocus pocus is a technique that I like uh, for, for this kind of problem because one of the reasons is that you know, you might be working with a sequence where doing this explicit solution might not even be possible. Maybe you have some, like, nasty third or fourth or fifth or sixth order polynomial, or maybe you have some combinations of exponentials and polynomials or some nasty expression such that the explicit method of approach it might literally be impossible to do with just algebra. So what Hocus Pocus does is it tries to replace our kind of nasty quantity, our sequence, with something that's a little easier to work with, uh, and which, in this case, is less than or equal to our original sequence. And the reason that we want that is that what we're then going to do when we choose this simpler and smaller sequence is that we're then going to have to justify this inequality, right? This inequality is less than or equal to m. And if that inequality holds, then the original inequality that we're trying to prove must then also hold. So all we want to do is look at this fraction and say, can I write uh, maybe another fraction, for example? which is definitely going to be smaller, but which is also simpler, which allows me to do some other sort of algebraic simplifications. So did your teams come up with any approach that can give us something that's simpler and smaller to work with here? So this is an opportunity to use your fraction intuition, right? We can make a fraction smaller in two ways. We can make the numerator smaller, or we can make the denominator larger, right? Um, and the numerator is already pretty simple, in this fraction, n squared, there's not a lot that we can do with it. But the denominator's got this n minus 1 going on that maybe if we replace the denominator with something which we know is going to be larger, uh, then we'll be in good shape. So the argument you just made is let's take the denominator and square it. And because any number which is bigger than 1, when we square it, we're going to get something which is larger still. 
right, than the original, then we know we've made the denominator bigger. If I keep the numerator the same, uh, now I know that this new expression written in purple here is definitely going to be less than or equal to uh, n squared over n minus 1. And what's the benefit? Why is this going to give, a, give me something that's simpler to work with? So what, what happened in your argument after you replaced n minus 1? Yeah, yeah. So what this allows us to do is now, if we're going to solve this inequality, we don't need the quadratic formula in its full flourish anymore. Um, all we would do is just take the square root on both sides, get n over n minus 1, greater than or equal to the square root of m. And then solving that inequality by multiplying by n minus 1 on both sides, collecting the like terms, dividing, and so forth, you end up getting something like n is greater than or equal to, what did you have? Square root of m over square root of m minus 1. Square root of m over square root of m minus 1. And so if that's the approach that you use, then you would choose to define your capital N using that expression instead. Square root of M over square root of M minus 1. And then your proof would proceed from there. So that gives us a little bit lighter load as far as the algebra goes. Um, let me make yet another recommendation. So this was kind of a modest proposal, right? Let's square the denominators, and then I don't quite have to use as messy of an algebra. Well, how about this? If I'm just looking to replace the denominator with something which I know uh, is going to be bigger than the original, another option that I have here is just to forget that there's a minus 1 whatsoever, right? What if I replace n minus 1 by n instead? Again, we can convince ourselves that for any natural number n, n is going to be greater than n minus 1. And therefore, this fraction is going to be smaller than that fraction. But n squared over n is just equal to n, at least for all positive, uh, positive values of n. And so what I end up getting is this. And that's an inequality that we don't even need to do any more algebra to solve. And there, I would go up to the top here and say, let's let capital N be greater than or equal to M. Again, we know that we can choose such a capital N because of the Archimedes principle. No matter what capital M is given to us by the universe, we can find a natural number which is greater than or equal to it. Right? Um, and so then the only tricky part, I guess, um, is in how do we then write this last portion of the argument? So let's fill in the rest of this proof. Uh, take a couple minutes to do that, uh, and then we'll wrap this up. So at the beginning of the proof, we say, let's let a real number n be arbitrarily chosen. The thing, too, about hocus pocus is that you and I might choose different, you and I might choose this expression here differently, but we can both write a valid proof based on, right? There's, there's a bunch of different roads here we can take. Um, so our proof will start by choosing an arbitrary m. The universe chooses it for us. And then we, as the authors of the proof, say, let's let n be a natural number which is bigger than or equal to capital M. We can do that because of the Archimedes principle. Then the universe comes back in again and chooses a little n that's greater than or equal to capital N arbitrarily. And then... So now we have to substantiate this inequality here. And looking back at our hocus pocus, we can kind of see the line of reasoning that's going to let us do that. Right? We're going to start with Sn on the left-hand side here. Sn is equal to n squared over n minus 1. And now is when we do the hocus pocus actually in our proof. Right? We say this is going to be greater than in fact, greater than or equal to, but we can even make the stronger statement here of greater than, because n is strictly greater than n minus 1. Right, so there's where the magic happens. That's going to be greater than n squared over n for all values of n. But then that, in turn, is equal to n. But by assumption, n is greater than or equal to capital N, which in turn is greater than or equal to capital M. So I'm going to kind of draw a box around these two facts up here, because it's these two facts that we're going to draw upon to make our final comparison to say that this is, in fact, greater than or equal to m as we were trying to prove. Okay. So the hocus-pocus method of approach here 
really sidesteps a lot of the nasty algebra that defines the exact values of this sequence, and it focuses in on kind of what's most important about the, the, the asymptotic behavior of the sequence. As n gets very large out towards infinity, this minus 1 here doesn't really matter all that much to the value of the sequence. Um, this is the kind of reasoning, by the way, that would fly in a calculus classroom. Um, but because this minus 1 doesn't matter so much, you know, pretty much n squared over n minus 1 is going to behave like n squared over n. And moreover, we know that n squared over n is exactly equal to n on the nose. And so whenever n is greater than or equal to m, our sequence will also be greater than or equal to m. And this, by the way, is exactly the same thing that you did in Calc 2 way back when. This was called the direct comparison test. Now, you were using it at the time, not in relation to sequences, but in fact in relation to series, infinite series. Um, but this is, this is the same kind of reasoning that you had to do way back then, um, which, for example, would be to say that because this quantity, n squared over n, marches off toward infinity, as n tends to infinity, any quantity which is greater than or equal to it will also march off towards infinity, uh, as n tends out to infinity. Um, but that kind of logic of finding a sequence which is bigger or a sequence which is smaller, um, on the nose bigger or on the nose smaller, uh, is what we knew as the direct comparison test back in calculus. So if you're having trouble sort of getting into the hocus pocus groove, hocus pocus mindset, you might want to look back at your Calc 2 notes uh, from when you did direct comparisons um, to give you a sense of uh, how to remember how to make a fruitful comparison here uh, that will let you simplify in the way that you're trying to simplify.